Prisco, and joining us now Fade making his class. UCSS debut <laughs> is Pete Prisco, NFL Insider. Hey, Pete. How you doing today, Pete? What's up, guys? How are you? Good, Pete. Thanks Good. for joining us. We appreciate it. Let, 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 By the way, go real quick. Olive Garden for Italian? What are we doing? Come on. <laughs> he's, not, he, he's not real Italian. Hey, hey, listen, <laughs> he doesn't know. It's unlimited breadsticks, Pete. No, no, no. I, they got the salad, on, but man. you put the cheese on no. the top. No? He doesn't know. No. Excuse, no. excuse no. him. He no. doesn't know. He does not know. I, you know what? That's a bad job out of me because I missed that, Pete. Yeah, I you, let, you let us I, I missed it. I didn't even. Come on, man. It didn't even click in my head that you said Olive Garden. That's a terrible hey, job listen, out of man, you. If, yeah, listen, you get some breadsticks in there and stop. Man, that's that, not even real Italian that's a, food. That's what Peter Sun Devil, because I see the Sun Devil helmet behind him right there. <laughs> right. That's yeah. right. That's They're right. Playing football Sun over Devil. there. Yeah, we can't. We can't go to Olive Garden. No, we no they are. not I don't know. We, you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> it's not. You know, what, what's your what, what's your Pete? Where do you live? I don't even know where you where you live. Do you live in New York? Fort Lauderdale. Oh, Fort no, Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. I mean, is there any good Italian? But there's food a lot in Fort of Lauderdale? New Yorkers here, so there's a lot of it. Yeah, there's a lot of New Yorkers here, so there's a lot of good Italian food. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Fair enough. I always think of Florida as not having great food, but uh, I guess I'm wrong about that. No. All right. No. Things, it's good. wrong. Things have changed over the years. <laughs> Pete, let, obviously, want to get to some Brown stuff, but let's start with Lamar Jackson. There seems to be speculation now that Odell Beckham Jr., who somehow got 15 million guaranteed, which is insane to me, uh, means that Lamar is going to come back. I don't see that connection. Are you buying this? Well, where's Lamar going? I mean, that's that's the problem. Oh, that's and fair. He keeps that's talking fair. about a, And he said, and he said, oh, I, I want to be traded. <laughs> You're available to all 31 teams right now. The problem is the Deshaun Watson contract. And he wants that contract and above it. Well, the Ravens have offered, from what I heard, to make him the second highest paid and the second most guaranteed money. And he, he's turned him down. Well, nobody else out there is giving it to him. Nobody's lining up to sign him. So what's he going to do? What are his options? Get to know Odell Beckham. Because the reality is you're going back to Baltimore and you're not going to sit out the season. He's made $32 million in his entire career. He can make $32 million next year. And what's the point of sitting out? You have to face the same situation the following year. So, so hold True. on. So I didn't, I didn't know this. What you, you said that they offer him the second most guaranteed dollars. That's what in, I was told. In the second That's biggest contract. Did, yeah. I didn't understand. I, I didn't I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't know that. He wants the Sean Watson. He wants the Sean Watson's contract. And he's not getting it. That's Pete, an outlier. Pete, the, yeah. pro, Pete, the problem to me is this. And I, you know, I, I, I'm a, I'm a former player, right? The, the problem to me is this: he doesn't have a mouthpiece doing the work, leg work for him, right? That's the problem, right? And I get it. You, you try to do it yourself. You want to keep it in the house. Your family. You want to pay the fee. I said, there's a purpose here, right? Because I'm a firm believer in the right mouthpiece. This thing would have been done a minute ago, right? Because it would have brought both sides to the table. Said, here's the deal that works for everybody, and everybody walks away. All you have now is a lot of animosity here, and I'm trying to see how it's going to tell me how it's going to get resolved here. Well, here's the other thing about that, and I've actually talked to people in the Ravens building about it. When you sit across from your quarterback and negotiate with him, you have to bring in his negatives. He hadn't finished <laughs> the season the that. last two years. Yeah, yeah. And when you do that, you know, it's hard to do. Anybody who's negotiated a deal for themselves, even in the workforce, you don't want to hear how bad you've done. You want to hear I'm good, right? And yeah. so I think that's tough. And here's the other side of it. If they gave him too much money, then everybody says, oh, they were soft on him because he's their quarterback and he's a guy they love. If they don't give him enough money, then they took advantage of him because he didn't have an agent. It's a, it, you can't win in that scenario. So I think what the Ravens did, they put it out there. We, they tagged him, non-exclusive tag. And they said if somebody's willing to give him that guaranteed contract, the fully guaranteed deal like the Browns did for Deshaun Watson – then we can come back and we could match it if we wanted to and say, hey, we didn't do it. We just matched the deal. I think we've already seen that the Watson contract and, and we're happy if it screws up the Ravens to, to, to you know, the, 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 the Watson contract. We'll see if, it, if it's going to screw up the Browns. Obviously, last year was a disaster because he was suspended and he, did, and he played like crap. If he continues to play like crap, it's a t total disaster for the Browns. Uh, I, my assumption is that he'll play a lot better, that he'll be closer to the guy in Houston. But until we see it, who knows? But um, I, I think what will be interesting is, uh, you know, if they get done this offseason, the Joe Burrow contract, the Justin Herbert contract. Because if those guys, especially Burrow, who nobody can argue to be ahead of him except for Mahomes, 
if Burrow doesn't get everything guaranteed, then really nobody else has a case besides Mahomes going forward. And can you? I can't see any scenario where the Bengals or the Chargers give out fully guaranteed deals. No, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Either. They don't have that kind of cash flow. They don't have the same kind of cash flow. That's a problem. Uh, the Bengals, you know, traditionally people have said they're thrifty. I, I, look, I think the Bengals have done a great job, so I don't necessarily agree with that. But the Chargers are a second tenant in the building. I mean, th- th- there's no way those two teams <laughs> are giving out fully guaranteed <laughs> contracts. <laughs> well, they said, really are. Yeah, yeah they, they are. are. That's, that's, are. Why, that's why, for me, that's why I found they're it funny. Right the they're second tenant. They they're they're like the Clippers. Yeah. <laughs> or the yeah, Lakers now. I can't pick up. I can't pick up. And don't get me wrong. I love the quarterbacks. I love. I love both those guys, and I would, I, I'd make them give them as high a contract as you possibly can go. But the fully guaranteed deal isn't happening for them. By the way, one more thing about Lamar Jackson: if you took this on the surface, you said, "Hey, here's a guy who hasn't finished the last two seasons. He has, you know, his play hasn't improved from when he won an MVP." You can take it and look at it from that standpoint. They haven't helped him at all. By the way, the Ravens giving yeah. him weapons and helping him around that offense. But you know what? They got a good offensive coordinator now in Todd Monk, and we think he's going to help him become a better passer because he's more than capable of doing it. They haven't helped him. No, it's true. Pete, I, w- I want to talk a little bit about the draft. Is there a chance that um, there's a run on quarterbacks? I've seen uh, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis is now being talked, and we already know C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young were at the top of the board. Um, could you possibly see a run on quarterbacks from what you're hearing with general managers around the league? Yes, uh, I don't think there's any question about that. You will see a run on it. Now, will it, will it go one, two, three, four? That's entirely possible, by the way. And, wow. and for all the people out there killing Will Levis, uh, you know, look, let me let me tell you this. Will Levis bashing reminds me of Josh Allen bashing from a few years ago. Nobody, nobody, or a few. I was one of them, actually, so I got that one right. I, I've had plenty of misses, Christian Hackenberg being one of them, but uh, I got the Josh <laughs> Allen one right. I love Josh Allen. And everybody, if you remember back to that, they killed him. He was inaccurate. If you went back and watched the tape, he was throwing to bouncers and bartenders. They were passes were (laughs) dorking off their faces. It was terrible. And when you look at this guy, here's what Will Levis played with last year, okay? First-year offensive coordinator who has since been fired because the offense was so bad. Offensive line wasn't good. Wide receivers, no real weapons. Remember the year before, he had Wondell Robinson. Then the running back is not a fast guy. He's a good player. And he was shot up twice uh, in both his shoulder and his foot during the season. And you ask him to go ahead and make a play. Now compare that to C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud played with four wide receivers the last two years or first-round picks. Four of them. He played his left tackle is going to be a first-rounder. His center is going to be a second-rounder. His right tackle is going to be a second-rounder. And the running back next year will be a second-round pick, bare minimum. You, now you can compare the two of them. And, and at one point, by the way, in 2021, Will Levis had Kentucky in the top 10. Kentucky. Think about that. So I think the Will Levis bashing is out of control. I do think they're going to go – there's a real possibility to go one, two, three, four. Were you surprised that, uh, that Carolina traded up to the top spot? Because uh, I was. So you were, obviously. Yeah, I'm not surprised they did it because when you don't have one, you're desperate. They have an yeah. owner that has a lot of money. He's desperate to get a quarterback. So yeah. I'm not surprised they did it. I just think this is a bad year to do it. Yeah. And look, Bryce Young is a phenomenal talent. He's a phenomenal passer, makes all the throws. Doesn't have a great arm, has a good arm, but stands in there, can move when he has to and make throws, keeps his head up. He's fantastic. But he's 190 pounds. Yeah. You know, you forget about the height. You know, everybody talks, oh, the height. Look at it. He's 190 pounds. I don't care what he weighed at the combine. I, there were reports that he played at about 175 pounds, 170 to 75 pounds at, at Alabama at times. That's a small guy. Yeah. And you guys, you know, you play in the league. That, that's tough to hold up at that weight, playing that position. So that's my concern with him. Stroud, you know, Stroud, again, he played with so much, so much talent around him. It's a hard evaluation. And then you look at Richardson. There is so much to love about that kid's game, and there is so much to hate about his game. (laughs) He's maddening. There's a play against LSU where he goes back into the pocket, clean as can be, clean as can be. And there's a guy coming open on his right-hand side, doesn't see him. What does he do? He leaves the clean pocket and runs for an 80-plus-yard touchdown. So how do you grade that? In the context of the offense, how do you grade that? So I think it's a tough – all these guys, Hendon (laughs) Hooker, he's 25 or 26 – Coming off an ACL, all these guys have issues. I'll give you a sleeper quarterback down the road. The kid from UCLA, 
he is the guy. When you look at him, he's got some – he can move. He's got good arm. You know, people talk about – Richardson's arm at the combine, the fastest that anybody was timed throwing a football miles per hour was the kid from UCLA. Wow. And he threw it 62. He tied Josh Allen. I mean, that tells you that he's got some tools, and I think he's a pro- your project, but so is Richardson. And yet yeah. you look at him, he's not as big as Richardson, but they're both projects. Where do you think he's going to go? What round, what round do you think? I've heard good things about him. He's, you know, third or fourth. He's moving up the boards a little bit. I mean, there, there's where you get – this quarterback class is not great. Next yeah. year's quarterback class, Drake May, Caleb Williams. I mean, he's got two guys that you think are blue chippers. Um, you know, that could change as we go throughout the season. So I, I just don't love this quarterback class. How many, again, how many quarterbacks around this league are half or are, are win with guys and not win because of guys? There's a lot of them. How many yep. win because of guys are there? You can name them on your hand. Six or seven. I mean, there's probably six of them. Yeah. Right. Is Jalen Hurts a win because of? He's getting there. The offense helps him. Is Lamar? He was, but is he? Can he be now in a conventional offense? Trevor Lawrence is getting there. I think he will be. You know, did 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 the did the Browns pay all that money for a win because of guy or a win with guy? That's the question of Cleveland. And, that, is, and I, that's where I we want to go. I think it's because of, but we we got to see it. We haven't I, seen it here. I, you know, Peter, I, I'd say. We we need four thousand yards and thirty plus touchdowns from Deshaun Watson. Can you give it to us? Because that, that's where we need to be at. That's a big number. Well, I was on the radio with you, Bull. Remember, and you argued yes. with me yes. about him. And and I was the one guy out there that said slow the roll on him a little bit. And you, you got that. mad at me. Remember? Yes. And 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 now you probably agree based on what you saw last year. And in, in fairness to the kid, he didn't get to play the whole year. But, right. But what, based on what you saw last year. You would probably agree more with me with the way I talked about him coming into the season. Uh, absolutely. Now, I still have faith in him going forward, but I had, go uh, to be fair, yes to you, it was a good call. I had no doubts about him going into last year, and I thought he'd be rusty when he came back, but I didn't think it would be as bad as it was. And I have a little bit of doubt. I still think it's more likely than not that he gets back to being that quarterback in Houston, but certainly I can't feel 100% confident in that now. No. Fair. Yeah, that's got to be a worry for them. It has yes, to be. Absolutely. And, and look, if he does, if he gets the 35 touchdowns and 4,300 yards, they're going to be a deep playoff team. Let's yeah. let's put that yes. out there, okay? But but the question is, is can he get to that? Mm-hmm. He better. <laughs> With all they well for that money, he better. Yeah. He, he, he certainly. What did you think of their off season in general, Pete? What do you think of how they did this off season? made some really good moves. I, I, I think when you looked at their defense, you know, getting Tomlinson's a, a good move. Uh, Okoronko is a really good – by the way, keep an eye on him. That's a sleeper free agent signing. I really liked him. His tape last year was good. I think playing, uh, you know, on the other side of uh, a Garrett will really help him. That's a great signing. And, I, and I've always been a big fan of Juan Thornhill. I think he kind of solidifies the back end. So, I, I think they've had a good off season to help that defense. This is going to be a team, when you look at it, and I look through their 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 you know position groups and everything. They don't really have a glaring need. I think you you got some guys you'd like to get. I mean, if you guys are probably uh, would agree, I, they probably could use another wide receiver. I think, don't yeah. you? I think yep. they could use another threat there. I, I, uh, I, know, I the love linebacker. That. Linebacker. The to linebacker. Me, linebackers. The area. Yeah. 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 Those are the two. Yeah. Uh, but I think you know can never have enough big guys up front either. But I, I think when you look at it, they, look they got. Lucky at center last year because, you know, yes, the kid did. got hurt and then Posick went in and played well. And now yeah. they brought him back. Uh, you know, they had injuries on that offensive line. I think the left tackle needs to play better. He wasn't good last year. Mm, that that was a major yep. concern for them as well. Yeah. So I, I still think they have a lot of talent. And in that division, there's a teams with a lot of talent. I think the Bengals are, are, are really talented. Uh, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts about Kevin Stefanski? Um, is he on the hot seat if they do not make the playoffs this year or come close to it? I think history would tell us he's on the hot seat. I think Kevin Savansky is a good football coach. But, uh, you know, again, we we can't really judge him based on what he's had so far at the quarterback position because even last year, like we said, he didn't play. And then when he came in, he was going to be rusty. So this is the judge Kevin Stavansky offense and judge him as a head coach this year. If they're, you know, because we know they're going to run the ball. They can run the ball. They've always been able to run the ball. When they're healthy up front, they're going to push people around uh, in the way they run the football. And and so I think that'll make it easier on Deshaun Watson. I think in turn, if he has that season we talked about, then Kevin will have a good year and they'll have a playoff year. If they, if Watson struggles, 
that's, you know, it's going to be bad for Kevin Stefanski. I mean, let's be real. And, and that was a move made from above. You guys know that. That move was mandated from above. And now you have to see how it plays going forward. Pete, let's wrap it up with the former Browns quarterback, Baker Mayfield in Tampa Bay. I, I you know, Baker to me, we had a lot. We have still have a percentage of our fan base that because Baker won one playoff game thinks he's the, the you know, the next uh, coming of Christ, I think. But uh, <laughs> but I, I think Baker's just a guy. I don't think he's going to make Tampa. He is definitely a win, oh, at best a wins with, not a wins because quarterback at best. Uh, do you think he has success in Tampa or is this his last year as a starter and he becomes a career backup? Well, he's got to beat out Kyle Trask first, and That's I think true. he will, but he does have to beat him out. And talking to people in Tampa, they were excited about him. And I saw a bunch of them at the, at the league meetings and, and they were excited about him. And one of the things they said, look, you can get to 9, 10, 11 wins with Baker Mayfield. Why would you go out and spend all that money on Derek Carr? And right. I kind of agree. They're all in that lumped into that pool together, the win, you know, the win with guys. And, and so I get it from that standpoint. Here's what Cleveland has to answer. Okay, you have Baker here not making a lot of money, and you have Deshaun Watson up here making a ton of money. Is there that much of a difference in terms of how they play? You would say yes. It won last year, though. Let's be real. No, it if, wasn't if last you get, If you don't get – no, if you don't get better – there's not a significant – if he doesn't get much better this year, there's not – the way they played in Cleveland, there's not a significant difference. And that's and, fair. But I'm going well, with you. They're win-with. They're win with. Yeah, I mean, I, I would actually even say that Baker at his best played better than, than Deshaun Watson played last year. However, Deshaun Watson in Houston, to me, is way better than Baker. If we get that guy, then it's, a, then it's huge. If we don't, the Browns are screwed for the next five years, basically. It's it's bad if if he doesn't oh. come back and have those number those season like we talked about that's bad for the Brown really total, bad because they're stuck. disaster. I Pete, thanks for the time, man. We appreciate it. Awesome. All right, guys, take care. Awesome. All right, it's Pete Prisco, CBS Sports. Good.